Well, good morning, everyone. We'll, uh, we'll make a start. Um, I'm very pleased to welcome the three-time Open champion Tiger Woods to the interview room. Um, Tiger, it's uh, three years since you've, you've played in the Open. How much mm -hmm. are you looking forward to competing again this week? I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, this is our, our oldest championship, and, our, and to come back to such a historic site um, just brings back so many great memories. This is my fourth championship here, and uh, just brings back so many great memories from playing as an amateur and obviously the two Opens I've played. So uh, looking forward to getting out there. The, the course is a little bit different than, than what it was the last couple times we played it, uh, so it'll be a fun challenge. And Tiger, you have a wealth of experience of playing in, in hard, fast conditions mm -hmm. in Lynx golf. Uh, does that give you a bit of added confidence going into the week? Well, I think it's just understanding how to play the golf course and how to play these kind of conditions. Uh, I think trajectory means, means a lot. And um, this, uh, this course can be played so many different ways, which is uh, uh, going to be the, the, the real interesting test is how we're going to you know, manage our way around the golf course. Uh, as I was saying to some of the guys a couple of days ago, that uh, the fairways were faster than the greens. Uh, yesterday, not as much because obviously the rain that came in, uh, but still they were a little bit quicker. Okay, well, thank you. We'll take the first question from Mark at the front, please. Hey, Tiger. Um, just wonder in, in relation to what you were just talking about, the conditions. We, obviously, mm -hmm. we all remember 06 when you, I think, you just one driver in mm -hmm. Hoy Lake. Is this the kind of place where you would do that, maybe other than the par fives? Or what's, what was your, what's your strategy from what you've seen, provided that it doesn't get very wet? Well, there's not a lot of opportunities to hit the driver just because the ball is going to be rolling 80 yards. I mean, I, I, it's just hard to keep the ball in play. Um, you know, even hitting sometimes four and five irons, they were running about 50, 60 yards. So it's, it's going to be an interesting test to see what, which, which clubs are going to be using off the tees. And a lot of it's dependent on which way that wind blows. And so, um, the whole idea of these practice rounds is get a good feel for what I'm going to do and then adjust accordingly based on the wind. That's a quick mm. follow-up. Is there any way, I mean, obviously, if, it, if the conditions remain the same, mm. that this can be played in a similar way to Hoy Life that you did, in the way you strategized that course? Yeah, it could, could be that way. Um, in either case, I'm not going to hit that many long clubs off the tees um, just because I, was, I, I hit a three iron on... What day is today? Wednesday. So on Monday, down 18, I went 333. So it's it can get quick out here. And obviously, we had a little bit of rain since then. Uh, but if it just dries out a little bit and it gets to where it was um, on Monday, then you know, you're going to see a lot of guys hitting the ball a long way with not a lot of club. Next question from number four on the right, please. Tiger, some of the young guys just in recent years have seen how dramatically the weather can change over mm. here over the course of the day. For you, is 2002 at Muirfield, that third round, still <laughs> the most stark example of that, that that you've seen? And is that still one that you know you sort of curse your luck a little bit, given how well you were playing? Yeah, I had won the, the previous two major championships that year, and I was really playing well. I think I was only a few back of the lead. Um, I think Stewie went out there early, won the first couple of groups, posted a good number, and was near the last group coming in come Sunday. I hadn't, I hadn't seen a weather change like that. I don't think any of all my years on tour, not like that, not that quickly. And uh, normally if it does blow that hard or does rain that hard, usually there's some kind of lightning involved and you gotta have stoppage of play. There was no stoppage of play. Uh, we had to play on. I remember uh, uh, Maru was right in front of me and he was huddled up behind one of the, um, one of the, I guess one of the, the boards behind one of the tee boxes to number the par five, wherever that is, like number five or something. And he was behind there freezing. And it, it was cold. I mean, it really was cold. Wind chill was into the 30s. And uh, we just weren't expecting that kind of weather. You know, we heard forecasts that rain might come in. It would be a little bit windier, but not that type of drop. Next question, Ian, in the middle. Tiger, can you compare your confidence levels mm. going into this major compared with the first two this year, given the kind of unique nature of, uh, of what we're expecting for, for the play this week? Well, I've, you know, each tournament I keep coming back to, I, I keep feeling a little bit better. 
um, because I'm starting to play some golf again. Um, my feels are much better than they were at the beginning of the year, and I feel like I have a better understanding of my game and my body and my swing uh, much more so than I, I did at Augusta. And um, that's just going to come with a little bit more experience. And I think that you know, I've made a few adjustments. Have you seen so far? I've changed putters. I've tweaked my swing a little bit since the West Coast swing. And everything's gotten just a little bit better. And um, I've put myself up there in contention a couple times. Uh, just need to play some cleaner golf. And you know, who knows? And, and just how much have you missed the Open, bearing mm -hmm. in mind you've not been here since 2015? I, I've always loved playing Lynx golf. It's my favorite type of golf to play. You know, that's, I say that uh, I love he playing here, this type of Lynx golf, or it's a style of Lynx golf down on the, the Aussie sand belt. You know, I, I enjoy this type of golf because it is creative. And, you know, you, we're not going to get the most perfect bounces. You know, a, a certain shot that is hit, you think is a, is a wonderful shot down, down the middle of the fairway could bounce some weird way. And um, that's just part of it. And I think that that's the, the fun challenge of it. I mean, the feel has a lot to do with playing the Open. And I think that guys, you know, traditionally over the years who've done well um, have been wonderful field players and also wonderful lag putters. Because um, a lot of times it is difficult to get the ball close and have a no, numerous amount of putts from about 40, 50 feet. Next question from number three on the right. Is it Leo? Can I Sorry, yes. just referring to that experience mm -hmm. you talked about, do you think that the Open offers you the best chance to win your next major in general terms and also the most chances in future years to win more majors? Um, not to be smart, but it, it is the, the next major I'm playing. In general terms. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in, as far as long term, certainly I would say yes because of the fact that you don't have to be long to, to play on a link style golf course. And look what Tom did uh, at, at Turnberry at 59, I believe he was. And so it's possible. Greg was there at Birkdale, I think about 54-ish, somewhere around there, 53, 54. Uh, it certainly can be done. And um, you get to places like Augusta National um, where it's just a big ballpark and it, the golf course outgrows you. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's just the way it goes. Uh, but link style golf course, you can roll the ball. I mean, as I said earlier, I hit a, a three iron that went down there at 330. Well, even if I get a little bit older, I can still kind of chase some wood or long club down there and I can hit the ball the same distance. So, it, you know, the distance becomes a, a moot point on a link style golf course. But creativity, it's such a, it plays such an important role. And you get guys like Tom playing late, late in his career, doing well. Well, there's a reason why he won five of these. Um, very creative and um, hit all the shots. Okay, next question, Rex on the left. Tiger. Yeah. I think you put a, a two iron like hybrid in the bag this week. Can you talk us through the process of what it's like to get it dialed in for unique conditions like yeah, this? Yeah, I, I did put in a new two iron in, in play this week. Um, it, uh, I, I went down in loft from my normal two iron. My, my normal two iron is about 20 degrees. Uh, I bent this one down about 17. And so I took a few degrees off of it. Just trying to be able to have the ability to chase one down there. Um, I still carry it about the same. It goes about 245, 250 yards in the air. But it gets to its final destination much differently. You know, obviously it rolls out. Uh, whereas mine, back home, I, I've generally liked having it at 20 degrees because I, I can hit the ball into the par fives as an option. Um, this one's not really designed for hitting the ball in the air to par fives as an option. It's, it's more of a driving club. And uh, I haven't really been able to use it that many times out here because I'm hitting my other irons so far just because of the conditions. But if it softens up, then it could be a good club. Or uh, if it doesn't, uh, if it softens up a little bit more, or if it doesn't soften up, then I just might add a degree to it and keep it a little bit softer and not have it so hot. Next question, Joy in the middle at the front. Tiger, uh, before the injury, uh, you always used to say that any course which is tough, brutal, you gave you an advantage over the field. 
I mean, not that you needed any help during those years. But after mm. the injury, is there any subconscious thought or any, you know, I mean, fear for tough conditions? Uh, although the rough mm. is not really very penal out here, but uh, is, is there any subconscious fear about playing tough, brutal courses? You know, that's a great question because the first week out uh, when I played at, at Tory, I was a little bit worried about the rough because I hadn't experienced rough yet. I had an experience where I'd swing full out to complete stop, and I didn't know how my back would handle it. Uh, but after that week and going through it, and then, granted, I hit like two fairways a day, so I was spending a lot of time in the rough, uh, it gave me a lot of confidence that my back didn't hurt. Uh, I thought it, it would be sore. I thought it, it would, I might feel a twinge, um, but I didn't feel any of those things. So that, that was a big boost into you know, the, the initial part of coming back and playing golf again. Um, some of the uneven lies, like I, I was a little bit worried about that at, at Augusta National um, because in prior years, those would hurt um, because obviously I was having some, some disc issues and they didn't hurt. And so I've progressed you know, throughout the year and had some, some nice little um, momentum things, building blocks. And um, you know, it's been, I've progressed throughout the year, which is, which is positive. Next question, number two there. Tiger, you touched upon it a little bit earlier. Your mm -hmm. first experience of Lynx golf was here mm -hmm. as an amateur in 1995 Scottish Open. How fond and fresh still are your memories of that? It was uh, one of the cooler things to staying on that range and hitting the ball to the, I guess it would be the 100 meter sign. And uh, I was hitting nine irons and four irons and five irons and just having a blast trying to hit the sign. And you know, I hadn't been able to do that before. I've never played Lynx golf. Um, this was my, my first time. So I, I remember my dad on the range with me saying, are you ever going to hit the ball past 100, the 100 yard sign? And I said, no, I'm just enjoying this. Is coming, you kidding me? This is the best. And so I spent probably about close to two hours on the range just hitting balls before I even went and played. I thought it was just the best seeing the ball bounce and being creative and, and using, using my mind. Um, I grew up in Southern California where it's kukui grass, nothing rolls. And so everything's vertical. And so to come here and I remember going down number two and uh, I was about probably close to 120 yards out, bring out my putter and putting it. Uh, I've never done that before. And that was one of the, one of the cooler moments. And uh, you know, throughout the day, like on, on, uh, on eight, I remember my, my dad would put a little wager on me, you know, closest to the hole from 100. Um, and things of, of, of that I, I've never been able to do up until that point. And so that was one of the coolest things. And it, it stuck with me. You can see I'm just telling a story now. Uh, those little moments like that, that was my introduction to Lynx Golf, Carnoustie and St. Andrews. Um, doesn't get better than that. Next question, back left there. Tiger, uh, what type of conversation might you have with your caddy? And, and in light of the unique con conditions, mm. um, does that in, sort of enhance the value of somebody who's knowledgeable, the right person to, to have that conversation with? Well, Joey and I have, have worked great through the, throughout the years. And, you know, we've, he walked it on Saturday and it was quick, it was drier uh, than it is now. And he basically formulates a game plan on his own. And then I'd come and play, and I played yesterday. I played on Monday, and I played a little bit on Sunday. But we had it. We had a pretty. I had a pretty solid game plan of where I would, I would play it too. I, how I think each hole should be played. And then as we're playing the hole, we start talking about the spots where we want to hit the golf ball. And I would have to say, every hole but one, that we're on the same page. Um, the idea of how to play each hole. And so now it's about getting feel for the rounds of golf. Now we've got rain coming in right now, and that's definitely going to change a few things. And we might have to alter some of the clubs, but I think our areas that we're playing to are, should be about the same. OK, next question in the middle there, number two, back. Tiger, after a three-year absence from the Open, how <laughs> does it feel to be back playing in a championship here in Scotland? And were there any 
points during that time that you felt that you may not ever play in an open championship again? Yeah, there were there was definitely points in time that I would I certainly thought I'd, I'd never play in this championship again. And you know, watching it on TV, it's um, it's great seeing it on TV, but it's even better in person. And I remember how it feels to come down the last hall with a chance to win it. And uh, knowing that I'm, I may never have that opportunity again. It, um, there were some, some times in there where it just didn't feel very good. Uh, but now to have the opportunity to come back to Carnoustie to play here in Scotland again, you know, it's, uh, I've said this before throughout this year, it's been a blessing. Uh, there were some times where I didn't think I would ever be able to do this again. And lo and behold, here I am playing my third major of the year. Okay, Paul, back right, please. Uh, Tiger, you found some confidence on the greens your last start. Mm -hmm. um, different putter. How is that going to work out here? And, and does, um, does some slower greens help you at this point? Um, you know, Bobby, I've, yeah, I have putted a little bit better. Uh, I rolled it a little bit better there you know, at, at the national. Uh, I did go to that mallet putter. has a little more swing to it. Uh, to be honest with you, I've, I've struggled on slower greens throughout my entire career. Um, it's one of the reasons why I, I think I, I really like the, the fact that this putter has grooves in it. Uh, so it does roll a little bit initially a little bit faster and a little bit, uh, a little bit more true. And it is a little bit hotter. And so for me, um, it's going to help on these greens for sure. Because I've, I've normally, when I've come over here and I've played on um, virtually almost every single open I've played in, I would put lead tape on my putter, try and let it up and try and get it a little bit heavier and get the ball rolling. Uh, don't necessarily have to do that with, with the grooves. And when I putted with the Nike putter, I didn't have to put lead tape on my putter to get a little more weight to it. Uh, I could leave it just the way it was, and this is the same type. Where's the priority of that compared to the rest of this? Trying to prepare here. Um, I think it's just, for me, it's just trying to get a feel for the, the speed of this golf course. And it was a little bit, um, the way Joey described it on Saturday, uh, you know, he was very surprised it was, it was this fast. And then you know, when I played it on Sunday, I played eight holes, I was very, very surprised at how fast the, the fairways were. Uh, but yesterday they were much slower because it rained. And so it's about, I think it's more about getting a feel. I, I feel very confident with the way I'm, I'm rolling the golf ball. Um, but the greens were a little bit slower yesterday. I'm sure they'll be a little bit slower today with this little bit of moisture on it. So again, I'm going to spend a little bit of time trying to get a pace for it. Okay, last two questions. We'll take number four and then we'll go to the back right. But number four first, please, in the middle. Hi. As the Japanese media, we are so excited you and Hideki playing oh. together first two round. And what do you think about your pairing for first two round and playing with Hideki? Yeah, I think I first played with Hideki here at this championship. I played with him at Muirfield. And so um, he was just new onto the scene. Uh, no one really knew a lot about him at the time. Uh, but obviously he's proven himself to be one of, the, one of the world's best players. He's won numerous tournaments all around the world. Had a hot spell there for about, it's almost about nine months, where he won about five or six times. And so uh, it'll be fun playing with them. I've always enjoyed playing with them. I've played against him in President's Cups as well. So uh, Hideki and I are, are fine, and we'll get out there and have a good time. And I'm sure we'll be kind of grinding and doing our own thing. Okay, last question, Doug Buckright. No uh, previous Russell Knox experience? or <laughs> No, I saw... I met Russell at, um, at my term at the Hero, at, at Rosie's house in a little um, pre term and barbecue. Uh, that's about it. I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you, you've seen, whether it's Justin and Berger and Jordan and all these, these young kids, you've seen their relationship on and off the golf course, which is something you never really had mm -hmm. um, through junior golf and then mm -hmm. turning pro like that. Um, do you wish you had something like that 20 odd years ago? And, and secondly, do you, do you see it all where that can be an advantage to them uh, in their own competitive ways? Yeah, you know, it's interesting you ask that question because when I first came out on tour, I was an anomaly in a sense that no one turned pro at 20. And I know that 20 is no longer like a, a young person on, on tour. But at 20 years old, you know, two years into in college, most of the players usually went through 
all four years and then tried to get on tour through the Q school and may not have made it. Um, so it took them a few years. So most of them, the, the guys that I grew up playing with were still in college when I first came out on tour. And then some of them took a few years. The ones I was really close to, it took a few years to get out here. So there's five years that I've been on tour and they have been on tour. And so by then I'd already played on Ryder Cup and President's Cup teams. And so the, the, the guys that I had grown up playing junior golf and college golf with took a little bit of time to get out here that I was close to. And in that meantime, I was getting close to like Mark O'Meara, Davis Love, Fred Couples, Payne Stewart. You know, those are the guys I started playing practice rounds with uh, just because I was on those teams together. And so now you have a, guys are turning pro at 18, 19, 20. That's like a normal age to turn pro. And uh, they're all making it at the same time. And so, yeah, you see these guys are really close, but they've been close since junior golf and made out here on tour very quickly and almost the same time frame. And so I think that's uh, one of the reasons why you see them, you know, hanging around with each other all the time, whereas I really didn't because it took the guys I knew really well a few years to get out here. Well, Tiger, thank you for joining us yeah, in the uh, Festival of Luck this week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you.